Funding for Behind the Headlines is provided by DHG and Advisors. DHG is a full-service accounting firm serving Memphis and the Mid-South region for more than 60 years, combining community involvement with the technical resources of a national firm. For more information, visit dhgllp.com. Production funding for Behind the Headlines is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. The city restructures its growing debt, election season is underway, and the other top stories of the week tonight on Behind the Headlines. Eric Barnes, publisher of the Memphis Daily News. Thanks for joining us. I'm joined tonight by a roundtable of journalists, starting with Jackson Baker from the Memphis Flyer. Thanks for being here. Sure. Bill Dree, senior reporter with the Memphis Daily News, and Andrew Douglas from Action News 5. Thank you all. So let's start, Bill, with the, the city has restructured its debt. I think actually as we tape this on Friday, they're, they're at market or have gone to market to, what is it, some 200 plus million dollars. Mm -hmm. But it was pretty controversial because it is what they call a scoop and toss. Give us the, the controversy behind it, and it inevitably kind of segues into a whole lot of politics that are going on in the city and mayor's office. Right. Technically, this is about a three-part deal, different kinds of, of elements of the city's debt. And it's not so much the amount a, a, as it is that the city is restructuring its debt uh, just about five years after their last debt restructure and uh, two years after the state controller expressed concern, grave concerns about the city's financial condition overall, but in particular about this kind of scoop and toss refinancing as, as they call it. What it means is that it, with, with the 2010 restructure, the city pushed out what amounts to a balloon payment and how it pays its debt, a, an acceleration of its debt uh, from one year to another from the year 2020. With the restructure, they pushed it out to another future year. Uh, the whole thing that, that was driving that is that 2020 is the same year that under state law, the, the city of Memphis has to be fully funding its annual required contribution for its pension, which comes to about $74 million. The city is currently $45 million to that particular effort. And Wharton has is, is, is proposed this five-year ramp up to the full, what's called the ARC, the, the, the retirement right. pension, under, underfunding of that, a five-year ramp up, which is controversial on the council anyway, but all that hit at the same time. And so as, as Justin Wilson said, the, the control, I don't, you know, he, I don't like this at all. He said, don't misunderstand me. The question is, how do you work yourself out of a situation you don't want? It was a, that was a sentiment across the board, right? I mean, the mayor didn't go proudly to the, the city council no. and say, oh, we're really, well, this is a great deal. City council, no one liked it. It's one of those ones that no one liked. They ultimately passed it, but no one liked it, and there were they, a lot of criticism. They ultimately passed it b because Wilson's sentiment carried the day. Of many difficult financial decisions that, that the city of Memphis has to make through the council and the mayor, the top priority by Wilson's judgment and by the eight to four vote of the council is that making that pension arc by 2020, right. if not in 2020, is the city's top priority. Yeah, Jackson, you To give you some sense of how grudging their acceptance of the deal was, the council, um, there was a bit of a tussle as to whether they should pass same night minutes. That's that's the process by which uh, they they accelerate the, the finalizing of, of something that's passed. Rather than wait two minutes, in which case there were various initiatives to find out if there were alternatives, they finally passed same night minutes, but just barely. Yeah, yeah, and, well, Andrew. yeah. And so, um, so here we are. We're on the, uh, the the cusp of a a very interesting political season. And from this political observer, I think that, and at least I would hope that Memphians are paying attention and watching because right. this is a tough time. It's it's a tough process. The budget process every year. It's always difficult. It's contentious. But it's a necessity, and it's yeah. very important to do. And and people want their city, their elected leaders, their city council, the mayor's administration right. to resolve these issues and not kick it down the line. And, well, and it's sure. be interesting to see what happens here. Sure. Yeah. And and what we're talking about here is taking money in the city's budget that could go to other things, 
Fixing potholes, since right. that seems to be <laughs> exactly. you know, yeah, the all the rage right now. Right. Yeah. Fixing potholes, that, that, that money that could conceivably be used for, for that and other services like that goes to pay this huge pension liability that, that the city right. has. And in cities, you know, the cities across the country, the Wall Street Journal did a story about pensions and in and, and, and cities, Illinois, I mean, and they used Memphis in that, that Wall Street Journal story. You had Kemp Conrad, I should say, another point of view among, and as you said, there are different points of view, and people should pay attention because there are long-term ramifications. Right. Kemp Conrad from the city council said that they, the city ought to go on a kind of a, a austerity budget, you know, cut expenses, cut back the capital um, expenses, uh, he said, we didn't do the tougher decisions back in 2010. This is more of the same. It's not responsible. And so you got a lot of critics saying, you know, the city has a fundamental problem. It's tax. I think everybody on the council in the city agrees taxes are too high and they shouldn't be raised more or drive people off. They've already cut back on services in, in various ways. They've cut back on the benefits for the biggest chunk of the budget, which is uh, pay and benefits to fire, police, EMT. I mean, there aren't a lot of pretty choices mm -hmm. in this, right. um, but there are different points of view. And, on and, it. and there is also, uh, among those who voted against this, there is real skepticism that the city will have the political will to do this over five years or in the years that follow the, the five year ramp up to fully right, to fully the, the five year ramp up yeah. that the political will becomes harder to find right. once we get past the 2015 elections and mm -hmm. everybody's safe for another four years. Right. This quite clearly becomes a campaign issue for yeah. people wanting to yeah. oust Mayor Horton, particularly yeah. Jim Strickland, who has been an austerity right. uh, advocate all these years. And by the way, this pothole thing that Bill mentioned. Uh, that is something that's not abstract that people realize no. those things are still with yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> right. I mean, they kind of say, hey, I pay this relatively right. high tax rate. Why? I mean, can't we just get that done? We can right. talk about esoteric issues about refinancing or what for most people are kind of out there sort of issues, but they want the potholes. Right, well. and, and it's not just the, the mayoral election. I mean, you're looking at several, perhaps several council members, their uh, positions being up for election this year. So yeah, a lot of eyes, a lot of jockeying positions. We'll, we'll kind of segue into the election stuff, but but one one thing, you know, they, Wharton said, and Wharton got, and I think you reported this, other people saw it. I mean, he got real frustrated with this criticism of the plan the mayor put forward, or that the mayor's office put forward. Um, he said, you know, all this stuff about getting this done in two years the ramp up that you talked about, mm -hmm. Bill, um, but they didn't have a plan. Was his frustration? They came for. They talk a lot. It was what Wharton said, but no one comes forward. It's a deafening silence. He said, um, "If there's a better package, you know, the 13 members of the council, someone come forward with a better package." And his point was, no one really did. They just criticized his package. So, and, and the controversy was almost like a note from from one's mother. You know, she says it's fine. <laughs> right, right, and it does. Yeah, exactly. His manner, it, 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 Wilson was was a, a very significant element in this whole discussion, right? Because he's very direct, right, in, in his assessment of it, and he wasn't cheery about it. And, and he also wasn't having any of the back and forth between the council and the mayor. He was saying, it's not my job to tell you you ought to do this as alternative A or B. Right. You just have a plan that's on the table, and I'm telling you what I think of it. Yeah. Let's, let's go fully into the politics right now. Let's start with you, Jackson. Mayor is up, the city mayor, uh, Mayor Wharton, is up uh, for re-election, obviously. There are a number of declared and probably to be declared uh, members of the city council who are going to be running for mayor and other, and other people running for mayor. And then you've got open seats in, in a number of places. Let's start with the mayor. How does all this impact, and, and how does this impact the start of the well, elections? Well, it doesn't do the mayor any really good because it's yet another piece of embarrassment, a little more egg on his face, um, and a little more backing, as I indicated earlier, for people like Jim Strickland, who have been demanding an, an austerity budget all this time. Um, and the mayor's situation has, has been made somewhat precarious by the number of people who have already entered the race because a lot of them are going to be drawing votes away from his African-American base. He, he, the mayor does have a good, strong base with African-Americans and with whites, but he's got rivals in both ways. And, yeah. Who, who, uh, let's name, name, name the declared candidates right now. Well, Justin Ford is, is really the, the uh, joker in the deck because he is somebody who's got a name, he's got, got the family name, he, he really probably doesn't think he can win, but, he, but he's building name right. recognition for a future right. race. He will draw votes from Horton because he's right. a little bit on that borderline, too. Right. Jim Strickland uh, has Jim declared. Strickland, Jim Strickland uh -huh. is his major opponent in the popular <clears throat> corridor in the, with the business community. Right. Uh, uh, is, Mike Williams, the, the, the police association head. Right, which uh, goes back to these cuts to, to benefits and right. so on. Right. Uh, James Harvey. 
uh, and um, the former county commission right. chairman. And if Harold Collins, From the who was the very first person last fall to indicate an interest, mm -hmm. but still hasn't dropped right. the other foot, if he should get in, I think the mayor's in serious trouble. Yeah, yeah. Thought, so, just, yeah, so um, it's just one political observer's perspective. So I see uh, two camps really defining themselves. You have Jim Strickland's camp. You have Mary C. Wharton's camp. And then from that point, because both campaigns have been fairly active and fairly media savvy, and then from there you have the second tier, Harold Collins, Mike Williams, Justin Ford. It'll be really interesting to see how that second tier takes away votes from those right. two big established right. camps. I'm, I, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to differ just a bit from the view on this. I think that with these dynamics, I think the more people, the more challengers you have to Wharton, I think the better it is for Wharton, for Wharton just on especially if you have two city council members in the race. It, I, I, I think that it, I think that it might mean that you have a scenario like you did with some of Wharton's late, uh, with Willie Harrington's later re-election campaigns, mm -hmm. where Harrington did not get 50 percent of the vote. Um, but I think, I think the more challengers you have. I think that the more it works in Wharton's favor. Mm -hmm. but, what about? But, uh, go ahead, Jackson. But it reminds me, real speaking of that, it reminds me of the 1999 race where you had Mayor Harrington standing for his third term, and there were six or seven other candidates. So Jerry Lawler and Mary Rose McCormick. There were, who was there were more the than that, but there <laughs> yeah. were six. six yeah. From major serious, Pete Sis yeah. and all kinds of yeah. people had right. names. Right. And uh, the mayor won pretty easily because they did b uh, break up all the opposition, but they didn't really touch his vote. And I remember I did an interview with him after that election. He said, I kind of resented having to run against those clowns. Well, <laughs> Horton doesn't talk that way. But right. he, I, I think he must, uh, he must wonder if there's something to what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think that, that you also have to keep in mind that, that, of course, politics is all about timing. And for, for all of... The, the foibles that are at play here, the, the, the inability at this point to uh, reshuffle his administration and get Jack Sammons in as chief administrative officer. Wharton has... Which I want to talk more about in a second. Right, yeah. which, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about in just a second. Wharton also has some things lined up that will work in his favor. Uh, he has the big opening of Bass Pro Shops coming up. It's a in, made for TV event. May first, <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. and it is going to actually be on schedule. Right, 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 right. right. And, and, and and he right. has he has several civic projects that are coming online, which is different turf than debt restructure and reshuffling. Sure. This his is inside baseball sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But that. but but it's also things that will attract the public's mm -hmm. attention. Right. Well, you, and you, you know, I was at the, um, and you were too, Bill, I can't remember if you were Jackson or, or Andrew, at the opening or the, the ceremonial groundbreaking of Crosstown. The mayor was there and it was basically a big campaign, campaign speech about feeling good, about the, you know, rebirth of Memphis. I mean, you can see these themes coming yeah. out. He's got the Ikea thing. He's got some really big things that, that uh, right or wrong, attract more attention mm -hmm. than the debt restructuring, They're, although the debt restructuring and the ARC mm -hmm. payments are incredibly and, important. People care more about the, the bright, shiny things. things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he's been very lucky. I, I know a person I saw his name, Bob Loeb, who re re rebuilt Loeb and Square, basically, with help from the, the council and the mayor somewhat, but it's mainly the council who did that. The mayor tried to back out at the last yeah, minute. Yeah, right. And Bob Loeb felt uh, he was obliged to make a, a speech introducing the mayor of, a couple of months ago of the very major event at Lafayette's Music Hall, and I never found out exactly why he did that, because he, he understood that Jim Strickland was aggrieved by right. it. Right, yeah, uh, yeah. But he's getting that kind of play. For well, major so that kind of gets into the whole thing with Jack Salmon. So <laughs> this is very inside baseball, but it does, it does have an impact on how the city runs and not just the politics, which is the mayor had is tried to get Jack Salmon, former city council, um, current head of the airport authority, kind of longtime politico and a lot of business com connections, to become his uh, COO. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to happen because they need a change in state law. You talk about being a little bit of a mess. And the funny thing about it is I think that people who look at it say, well, the reason he wanted to get Jack Salmons is because he couldn't execute changes like this. And, I mean, it's kind of the irony of the situation. Mm -hmm. he, he, people like George Little, the current CAO. George Little is the first to say, and he's been on the show, very informed, very, you know, but he's not a political person, you know, and he, he what does that say, Bill, about the state of the Wharton administration and its ability to get things done in an election season? It, it shows that these kind of shuffles, uh, mm -hmm. reorganizations, house cleaning, whatever you, you right. choose to call it, 
are very, very difficult to pull off going into an election. That's, yeah. that's why most of the times when it's done, it's done after the election. Wharton is certainly not alone in having difficulty doing this. When Myron Lowry was the interim mayor, he spent most of the three months that he was interim mayor trying to fire Elbert Jefferson as the city attorney. Right. And, and, and that, that weighed him down to a certain degree in his bid to become the next elected right. mayor of the right. city. Your thoughts, Jackson? Well, I saw Jack Sammons last night. It sounds like I'm name dropping. I just had to go to a big fundraiser <laughs> last oh, night. Oh, go ahead, I saw all, all these people. But uh, last night, uh, Jack was telling me he thought his chances were 50-50, but it was obvious he was inflating his chances. I think he realized that, that, that the handwriting was on the wall. He also made it very clear he wanted to remain with the airport authority under all circumstances. Right, right. And that's, his, where this is hit, that's where this has hit a he, brick wall. And yeah. he said there are various yeah. technical reasons why people in the legislature are resisting the, the idea right. of a bill to legalize uh, his tenure both places. What Sammons thinks is that the suburban legislators, for political reasons, don't want him, don't, don't want, want but benefit okay. the mayor. I got you. I got you. Thanks. I, I was just going to say, uh, several months until the election, <clears throat> a lot can happen between right. now and then. But those tangible items that you brought up, Crosstown, uh, Bass Pro, those <clears throat> issues, people see that. That, that's going to run the news cycle, and it's going to help. And the, the generally improving economy. Right. right. I mean, just and nationally, it helps the regionally, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so let's do real quickly the city council elections. There are how many openings right now? Who wants to do this? The, three. three you, why don't you do the, do the, do right. the facts real quick? 13, 13 seats on the Memphis City Council. We could have as many as four open seats. That depends on your definition of open. Uh, yeah. Open seat meaning there could be an appointee to fill some vacancies. Yeah. Shea Flynn mm -hmm. is talking about um, resigning from the... Well, he's actually, he's had no comment right. on this rumor that he might resign this year to take a position with the chamber, but in either case, he, he said this week that he does not intend to seek right. re-election. Then you've got mm -hmm. Berlin Boyd, who's in a seat that who's filling the district. He's, he's got, he's seat, got so an that is, He'll be, it's kind of an open seat. What other open ones come, come well, up? Well, uh, District 5, uh, of course, uh, which is one that Jim Strickland abandoned. Right. And that's got a lot of people in it, a lot of people with chances. Uh, including someone you, the general public may not have heard of yet, they will hear of him, Worth Morgan, who, who was a member right. of the brokerage family, right. who had a humongous fundraiser a couple of nights ago at Oak Sedge, um, which is one of the primary uh, Republican venues. Um, there are a lot of fun, big fundraisers. Jack Sammons uh, yeah. hosted one last night for, for uh, Bill Morrison. Everybody was there. That's yeah. why I'm able to. I wasn't run. there. I'm yeah, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. and, and you've also got possibly, if Harold Collins gets into the mayor's race, then his yeah, district that, three council seat district. becomes okay. an open All right. Seat. Let, let's segue out of the local politics into we're, we're what? What would you say, Jackson? Two thirds of the way through the the legislative session I'm in sorry. Nashville, I'm beginning sorry. to get to that point where everyone's going to get focused on the budget and yeah. and and some of the other issues aren't going to happen. Your your take on this this super majority. Um, legis legislature that started uh, with a whole lot of noise about Insure Tennessee, the, the expansion of Medicaid or Obamacare, depending on your perspective, that went, that went flaming and in, in went nowhere, couldn't even get out of committee. How's it, how has the legislature been since then? Well, they're, they're moving slowly towards something. Once again, it's deja vu, school vouchers. There is a bill that the governor supports that is moving ahead. By the way, the Senator Brian Kelsey of Germantown, who's always been the bet and of the governor, proposing stronger voucher bills than the governor wanted. That proposed a bill, but the governor ignored it. Everybody else did. Kelsey signed on to the bill the governor supports. That may be moving ahead next week, although it, the sponsor in the House took it off notice yeah, this past right. week, which is very odd. But as I understand, that's, a, that's going to be a matter of a technical correction. That bill will probably pass, although it's not a slam dunk. The uh, educators all over the state are resisting it. The Shelby right. County Commission voted... Uh, overwhelmingly to oppose it. But it's a pilot program, right, of, of a couple well, thousand low-income people? 5,000. 5,000. Uh, yeah, to state. begin with, uh, the lowest 5% of poverty was. Right. But in three years, it would be 20,000, that's $70 yeah. million well, dollars yeah, out of the public school money. system. Right. And yeah. number of kids. So that's one major thing that's happening. Um, there have been a couple of gun bills that have surfaced. Um, one, the, the Kelsey bill, that was, that was going to prohibit... Uh, uh, Principals and so forth from penalizing students for having guns in their cars. That was uh, that was defeated in a subcommittee But I think there's a bill that's moving to fruition that would prohibit uh, uh, local jurisdictions 
from banning guns right. in parks. And well, it is interesting, and, and uh, Sam Stocker writes for us out of Nashville, so it's on our side, it's on, uh, you can just find it on the, on the web. An interesting article, the, the NRA, I guess the National Convention is in Nashville in April. Mm. There were some Republicans, who, and maybe some Democrats too, but it's mostly Republicans up there who wanted to have a whole lot of these bills passed. Um, kind of in honor of that convention coming. Haslam has resisted some of these ones. Uh, Rick Womack out of uh, Murfreesboro area wanted a bill that would allow you, basically, you didn't have to have a permit to have a gun. You could just have a gun, and open the assumption carry, was, yeah. yeah, well, not even just open carry, close, just no permit. The Second Amendment allows you to have a gun, and you have to, okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Haslam has resisted some of that, and that's this interesting thing where you've got, you've got the whole Republican tent is made up of everything from, I say it too often, from Tea Party to Fred Smith, business Republican, and everything in between, and how they're going to get along. And obviously, they didn't get along with Insure Tennessee because the the business wing of uh, the Republican Party was pretty in favor of that, or a lot of them were. Well, it's so just, it's just, just a, interesting. It's just a taint that is tattooed on every Republican's arm right. about Obama. The yeah, name yeah. Obamacare is attached to it. All right, let's move on to uh, uh, both. It's sort of a tale of two cities: the, yeah. the Grizzlies and the Tigers. It's a big basketball town. Um, one, one's a great story, one's not so much. <laughs> it, well, it, when we refer to the Grizzlies, you know, it's almost like the tale of, of two different seasons. You have this first part of the season, they were on fire, one of the best records in the league. Uh, everybody's getting together both on the court and off the court, too, celebrating, hanging out together. And then you had the All-Star break, and it was, I think, 11 days for the guys. And ever since the All-Star break, there's... Uh, Something missing. There's something not right. Uh, chemistry, perhaps. There is. Uh, they're eight and seven since the All Star break. They're forty seven and twenty one as we record this. There's um, Tony Allen's been suspended for one game for getting in a fight with one of the other players, Nick Calathes. And then you have Ben Oudre sitting down a, a portion of uh, time because he's getting in a fight with the coach Jaeger. And and the chemistry just seems a little bit off. This comes as we're trying to sign, I say we, the Memphis Grizzlies are trying to sign Marcus Gasol, which is very important for them. Right. And, you know, there's rumors that, you know, if Tim Duncan uh, retires, that San Antonio's <laughs> going to make a big push for Marcus Gasol. Right. They got 14 games left in the regular season to figure this out. Then the postseason happens. Hopefully they figure it out because right. they have the potential, as we all know, to go very deep into the playoffs. They're but still it, a two seed. I mean, right. which is, I mean, yeah. in an overheated West, and I mean, they, it's amazing to be. It doesn't. Look, they're not going to reach one because because uh, uh, Sacramento, or not Sacramento, Golden, Golden State, State is yeah. so far ahead of them. But yeah, the, the feel good story, which has been great, and that that everyone just people who like sports like that team, sure. has been a little tarnished over the last um, uh, uh, few weeks. Not tarnished as bad as the Tigers. Well, who, you know, that's let's, true. Let's tell yeah, the, oh, the yeah, other yeah. story. Yeah. Is that's the Tigers who did not. That I mean, is tattooed. It's just you know, the, right. people are. If you listen to sports radio, people are losing their minds. Or you listen to our newsroom, which is is a lot of Tigers fans. Yeah. Didn't get in the tournament. Didn't even get into the NIT. NIT. Uh, I think everyone hopes this was just a blip on the radar. The the, the team has been in the tournament every year that Pastor has well, been coach until yeah. this year. Well, that may be a seasonal slump. Let's hope so. But but the Grizzly thing, um, 47-21, those are not bad numbers. No. Right. right. No. Eight and seven, that means you won more than you lost. Right. A slump. Every right. team has some with the mm -hmm. Spurs. Last year's champions yeah. lost seven straight or something yeah. like that this year. Yeah, Pe Teams go on slumps. It's a long This is a good time NBA to season. get it over with. That's yeah. true. Yeah. But That's you want true. you want it, you know, fans sure. want it to, you want to go into the season, into the postseason strong. Right. And and so we, when referring to the Tigers now, you know, Josh Pastner seems to be that lightning rod. You either love him or you hate him. And certainly he's received a ton of criticism this year. Um, and, you know, perhaps the team not living up to expectations or what have you, um, he does right. have some new players coming in, yeah. uh, he, and and he has his new coach, who's the father of those two players, and so perhaps that will uh, keep him uh, keep the team relevant in, in the years to come. We'll see what happens, but but yeah, certainly a down year for, yeah, yeah, for the Tigers. Yeah. Let's do a quick sidebar here, just a roundup of some things. We Memphis, it is it is official, it is unveiled. The Cheesecake Factory is coming to town. <laughs> this this was huge news, right? We probably was, should have led with the We should have led, <laughs> should have led with the Cheesecake Factory. I, it, Wharton talked about it in his State of the he, City. He, he It was an ad lib. He he yeah. made, he made, he, he only said the phrase Cheesecake Factory one time in what was a pretty substantial speech in terms of its length and the various other topics. Right. And, and it was a complete throwaway reference. I, I believe that he really 
was kind of like, hey, we got a cheesecake factory. And, yeah. You well, know, it's a big deal to some people. Like his daughter-in-law. It was yeah. some sort of joke. Yeah. yeah. Right. It, well, he definitely mentioned it in the state of the city. And then later on uh, in that uh, uh, thing at the Lafayette's Music Hall, he said, listen, I, I misspoke myself. I was just making a joke for you after a conversation with my daughter who wanted Cheesecake Factory. I think that what that means is it was some back and forth negotiations. Oh, absolutely! All he was covering things. both ends yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people are excited. That I, I don't. I, it seemed to me like, oh, it's one more chain restaurant, but th th there's some confetti. It, it's not as big a deal as say IKEA or some we of these other big ones. We have right. a consumer culture in Memphis, yeah. so these things are going to happen with right. that with IKEA. Right. You know. Right. And Elvis Presley, um, what's going on there with these airplanes? They, they, the, the airplane. Mm -hmm. they, there's a lot of really good stuff happening. They're, they're building a 450 unit hotel. Mm -hmm. They're going to the State with their TDZ, it's a non-controversial, which is a tax incentive tourism development zone, not controversial, unlike the fairgrounds. But these airplanes, what's um, happening? What What's happening is that uh, the new partnership over over those two jets has a site that is about about a block south of where they are now in Graceland Plaza, probably just on the other side of the line, and not on Elvis Presley Enterprises property, and. Uh, and in this new arrangement, Graceland has some problems with right. it. So it, it will be a zoning matter that will come to the council in right. the first meeting in April, uh, on April 7th. Right. Meanwhile, Graceland's about to close on the financing for the new hotel, 450-room right. uh, hotel that's the third largest in the city, and, uh, and, and then they will start on that, right. and they'll go to the State Building Commission next month all right. for approval of the okay. Tourism Development Zone. All right. That, that is all for this show. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for joining us. Join us again next week. Good night. Funding for Behind the Headlines is provided by DHG and Advisors. DHG is a full-service accounting firm serving Memphis and the Mid-South region for more than 60 years, combining community involvement with the technical resources of a national firm. For more information, visit dhgllp.com.